welcome back to the feature, you guys. I hope you didn't miss the earlier live stream when we're talking about Logo on our other channel, our sister channel, the Feature Academy. But we're back to the main channel because we're going to keep it real. We're going to keep it raw, you guys. Today, we're going to talk about influence. And we're going to have a real conversation with my guest in the room. Her name is Yvette Roman. You can check out her photos at yrphoto.com. Here are some of the beautiful images I've been able to grab. Now, I didn't consult with her beforehand. Otherwise, she said she would have shown me brand new images because a new website is forthcoming. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But you can check her out also on Instagrizzle by checking out her Instagram. It's at Yvette Roman Photo. All right. Yvette, welcome to the show. Hi. Yeah. So, thank you guys. Yay! Yay! So you, you can't hear that. Okay, there they are. So the reason why I wanted to have a conversation with you today, I have to look at this camera, otherwise it's gonna. We're both looking in the same direction. It's it's a little weird for our audience, is because I was talking to Robbie Knock over at Art Center about Bold and what we're trying to do with this workshop that we're putting on about how to help people that are image makers, specifically photographers, like if you do that for a living and the whole social media thing confuses you, you're perplexed by it, you don't get it, you don't like it, you hate it, you think it's you're too old, too young for it, whatever, I wanna talk about that. So thanks for coming. You're welcome. And, and then I find out you're one of the co-founders of Bold. I am. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Okay, so let's get into the conversation. What's the context for everybody to understand this and so that they can also dive into the conversation with us? Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> tell, tell, me, tell me anything. What, do, what should we talk well, about? Uh, I think it's important um, to talk about social media's impact on professional photography. Mm -hmm. um, I am told that 95 million photos a day get uploaded onto Instagram. Mm-hmm. And m many of them, eons of them, tens of thousands of likes to photos that have nothing to do with a professional practice. And it's becoming very hard to distinguish yourself as a professional yeah. in that realm. And because of Instagram filters and because of the uh, greatness of the iPhone cameras, yes. mm -hmm. it's really difficult for somebody to look at somebody's Instagram and really tell if they have the chops to really produce something, mm -hmm. or if they're just making photos that people like on Instagram and getting all sorts of, um, all sorts of attention for that. Yeah. So how does somebody who's invested $250,000 into an art center Ooh. education? Oh, that's a lot of hurts. money. I know, right? My cash <laughs> <register sale. laughs> By the okay. time you pay for housing and supplies. <laughs> yes, it's, it's expensive, um, there it is. Or, yeah. 25 years of their life mm -hmm. and an art center education or not yes in their practice how does somebody pull away from that noise and beat instagram yes okay Woo. there's a lot there for us to talk about <laughs> i just want to write down one thing before i forget okay and i just want to let everybody know that you went to art center I you're did. a professionally trained photographer you have the gear the training experience you shoot some really high-end weddings for some famous people that you can't talk about and you're many years some into this some some you can <laughs> you want to drop some names uh who have who you shot for about? i've shot for nicole ritchie um i've shot for many many uh very wealthy families a lot of mm -hmm. showrunners producers di film directors matt reeves People is one business. of my clients who just did all the he's doing all batman movies he did the mm -hmm. um Planet of the Apes films. Wow. So I have a lot of behind the scenes people mm -hmm. that are storytellers that yeah. I shoot for and we collaborate and tell their story, which okay. is my favorite. So here's and the thing. The reason why I want to say that is because sometimes we have people who are self-taught. This is not one of those people. This is a <laughs> highly educated person who's been doing this for a long time. It's been in the business, has worked for the who's who at the highest form of her craft. Okay. So now we're going to talk about this. And I feel this. I feel that Instagram was made for people just like you, Yvette, because it's a thing that loves visuals. And you're right about the proliferation of smartphones and the ever improving sensors and the technology they use that almost anybody can take a halfway decent photo. And so it's, it's kind of getting lost in the sea of images that are out there. And I've talked to other professional photographers, portrait photographers, people who do things like that, and they're just not getting a lot of love on Instagram. But the question of how do I beat Instagram, tell me more about how you, why you phrased it like you have to beat Instagram. <laughs> well, 
I have a bit of a contentious relationship with Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and there goes the Instagram sponsor, you guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. no. It, it feels it feels like high school sometimes. Yeah. And if oh, you're not you're gaining, mm -hmm. you feel like you did in high school when the popular kids. Yeah. And then you're off to the side with like the cool kids around the corner. You must have been in the popular kids. No, school, I Come was on. and the cool kids around the corner, and the popular <laughs> kids were over there. And okay. sometimes we met, and sometimes we didn't. But. Uh, it feels a lot like that and it, it and just trying to navigate well there's a lot of different ideas out there mm -hmm. do you does your work should your work all look the same so your grid is pretty or mm. should you really do what you think are relevant images to what you're doing at the moment i mean and the hashtags and the tagging you do that you do that you do that but it's yeah. not getting you followers followers come followers go do you and then the big question of, do you buy followers? Are people buying followers? Yeah, the bots. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just really mysterious. Yeah. And my Instagram has hovered, and I'm just going to say it. I have no shame at just under 1,000 followers mm -hmm, for the last few years. Mm -hmm. And without doing something besides what I'm doing, which is supposed to be all the right things, I can't seem to get anything meaningful above that. Yes. And I know there's a lot of people stuck there. Mm -hmm. And I'm mid-career. Mm -hmm. I'm not starting out. Yep. And I know that there's a lot of mid-career people who started from an education, like, let's say, Arts Center, CalArts, Otis, whatever. And we promoted ourselves completely differently, making real re relationships that were face-to-face, -face, yeah. having coffee, having lunch, talking about really serious ways to solve visual problems. Mm -hmm. And it was not about about likes, and it was not a popularity contest. Yeah, I'm failing. <laughs> okay, okay, this is fantastic. Uh, okay, this is a great. That was a lot of really meaty context for us to talk about this. I think our audience is going to be split in half here. Mm -hmm. Some of them are going to connect with your story and said, "Yep, me too." Different me too, but me too. <laughs> and then the other ones are like, hey man, I'm all on the Instagram. I got 55,000, 200,000. She's old school. She didn't get it. <laughs> and we're going to talk about this because I think there's yeah. a place for both of us to coexist. And I understand that it can feel like a popularity contest. And do the likes and the comments and the followers actually mean anything anyways? Because will they hire you to shoot a, a commercial gig or an editorial or anything like that? Who's actually watching this stuff? So I want to talk about that and try to like really have a deep conversation with you and everybody that's watching with us on live, live on YouTube. Make sure you start forming your questions and drop them in. Make sure it's relevant to what we're talking about today. And I, I feel your pain. <laughs> I really do because sometimes it feels like you were the, the good girl. You, you followed the rules. You paid your dues heavily. And you worked your way up, you have success, and then somebody along the way rewrote the rules on you, <laughs> exactly. right? And it felt like the rug got pulled out. So some kid who's 18 years old is running around their iPhone, shooting things and, and getting accolades or something. We don't even know, but it mm -hmm. feels like there's they are what's happening. So the first thing I wanna talk about is this, is that I too am an Arts Center grad, and I also used to worship at the throne that said, the best images win, the best ideas mm -hmm. win. And that was what we were fed so that if we refined our craft and made sure that the images were perfect, if they were perfect, that then we would get all the accolades and the doors would just open for us. If we put in the work, that would happen. What they didn't understand is this new technology allows people to have direct relationships with buyers or fans of their work. And now we have to learn a whole new set of rules and ideas that are going to shock our system. And it's going to be shocking because you might say, if you're a, a, like a really well-established image maker, illustrator, photographer, you're going to say, I shouldn't have to prove myself. Well, I, I hate to say this, but <laughs> if you like what you are getting, then just keep doing what you're doing. But if you're ready for change, then anything is possible at this point. So let's talk about a couple of things. I think, like if you walked into a gallery, like an art gallery, and you saw beautiful paintings, what makes you feel like that's worth a lot of money? Is it because it's in the gallery? So some curator mm -hmm. has vetted the work and mm -hmm. you trust that this is going to be valuable? Is it the little description at the bottom of the painting or photo? And you read that and it tells you something, it touches you and you have a new appreciation for that piece of work. 
Or is it because you know about the artist's story and what they went through and you connect to that? And there's something there that touches you as well. You could say none or you could say all of those things. So when we celebrate just the finished image and we don't tell our story and people don't know who we are and now the gatekeeper is everybody, <laughs> that begins the problem. So I think if you look at a Jackson Pollock painting, as many people can splatter paint, like my kid can splatter paint on canvas, but because it's a Jackson Pollock that that has value to, to the world, to society. So when you post a lot of images and they're beautiful images, if you guys aren't sure, go to Yvette Roman photo on Instagram, check out her images. They're beautiful. No doubt about it. They're better than most of the images that I see on the internet, except for the story. Like, who are you? How do I know who you are, what you stand for? And that's what they're buying into. That's why these young people have a ginormous following and they can leverage their influence to do other kinds of things. And you can most definitely make money doing this for sure. So let's talk about that before I go on my thing. Because <laughs> I want to have a conversation with you about this. Okay. Yeah. So what, what are your thoughts so far in terms of what I said? Well, and I want you to push me as hard as you want to push okay. me, okay? I mean, do you are you talking about your written story being your explanation of your photo? Because I, I think that, okay, there's perceived value. Yes. We all, and you just described that. When you walked into a gallery, are you attracted to the painting because somebody of influence said you should be? Mm -hmm. That's something yes. big, huge, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of our work, most of my work is from, from referral. So, it's, so that's, that's in effect go. right there. That's real life. That's how it works in the real world. Right. But when you say tell people who you are, what do you mean by that? You have to step in front of the camera. Okay. Yes. Okay. You have to be a part of your art making. So it's not necessarily in the dialogue that you say underneath the photo that you post. It is that too. Yeah. But they won't read that unless they're engaged with you to begin with. Okay. So that means you have to get out in front of the camera. Now, we were just talking about this and <laughs> I'm like, hey, I, I tried to find an image of you on the internet. I know you sent it to me. Bad Chris. You know, I didn't look at the email. Bad Chris. But I, I just couldn't find a lot of photos of you. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't. Not high res photos. I'm like, there are other people out there and there shouldn't be because you're a photographer. You should have your image everywhere. And we talked before, like, you're really good behind the camera. You're comfortable speaking. You're not that comfortable speaking in front of the camera. And that's just the thing. And maybe there's a hypocrisy here, but I, I think this is going to resonate with a lot of the creatives that are watching this. It's like, <laughs> I just, I went to art school, so I didn't have to talk. So I don't have to be in front of people. But that's why the, the rules have been rewritten. And we need to understand that. We need to learn how to play the new game. And you could be the world's most celebrated artist. But if you don't, if nobody knows about it, what do you do with that? Like you could be the world's best artist. I, sh I, I need to rephrase that. You could be the world's best artist, photographer, illustrator, whatever it is. But if nobody knows you, knows your story, they don't connect with you. See, I buy artwork. What, yes, visually it has to look good, but because I appreciate the person who's making that. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's many ways for me to find out more about their story and understand who they are and their perspective in the world, but make it easier for people to find you. Right. I mean, so, it, it's so different because mm -hmm. it, it did used to be where you would be in front of somebody saying who you are, an art director, yeah. a client. But now it's it's just so much different. Now you have an audience, a, a, a what do you say? not a silent audience, but a you can't see your audience as much, and except for a likes. Well, let's talk about it. I don't know if I agree with that. Okay, you can't see your audience. But where in history have you been able to have some kind of connection with your audience and to have a conversation with them? That's true. So when they comment, it's like, oh, your story really touched me and or I'm curious about how you found that shot or what did you do for lighting? You can have that conversation. So when I put up a website, there's no dialogue. I'm just talking to them, talking at them. Right. But right now, you're, you're doing something that most people wouldn't do, which is to step in front of the camera, go on a live stream, and to be totally vulnerable and real with me. And instantly, people are going to seek you out now. 
So we, we just have to be brave enough to get out of our own way, right? <laughs> yes. And just be willing to do this. And wonderful things can happen. You, you got to get on to, uh, well, you, you know, the old school way is you would be featured in a magazine. Mm-hmm. That's old school PR. And that takes a long time to develop, right? Indeed. The stories are worked on months before it's released and you, you already moved on to three different things. And we're not moving as fast as the conversation is happening right now. So Instagram loves you. Instagram wants you. It needs people like you. But you have to learn how to play the game the, the way it's been designed. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. So let's figure out some things that we can do together. Okay. So we have that understanding. So people that have, that they have this attractive character, that they're relatable, that they, they have certain parables that they can share with people. They're, they're not afraid to alienate people because they're going to say something that's true and authentic to who they are. That's going to resonate with people. So you must be willing to do something like that. And you don't have to do it all at once. You can do it in small measured steps and you can see what works. And see, I'm a little bit of a geek and I love the instant feedback. I know if we were making a video, if it works or not within the first 48 hours, I know that. So I go back and say, guys, maybe it was a good idea, but we just didn't execute it well. Or maybe we didn't promote it properly. Or maybe nobody cares about this thing. And then we have to just learn from that. I love how iterative and immediate the feedback is. And you can have a real conversation so that people are enrolled in your story. And they want to, to support you and to love and to appreciate you. They really do. There's haters too, but <laughs> the majority of them, like 95% of them, really genuinely have positive vibes and feeling. Right? Like when we started our, our stream, we were at 100 people watching. Now we're at 248. Mm -hmm. So, so far, they're connected to this. So let's keep going. <laughs> let's see if we can get to 400. Let's see what happens, right? Let's keep keep going. So what else, what else can we talk about? Uh, I'm only as good as your question, so hit me. Well, let's talk about followers yeah. and mad followers mattering. And I'll tell you that I I booked a huge job. Mm -hmm. It would have been the biggest job of my career f commercially. Yeah. Um, I'll just say it with Canon. I was I, mm. to shoot an ad campaign for them. Yeah. I got the job. It was amazing. Yeah. And then literally 20 minutes later, after I'd already started making calls to start booking a crew because it was coming real fast. Yeah. They called me and said, oh, my God, we can't hire you. And I why? said, why? And they said, because you don't have 50,000 followers. On oh, Instagram. my God. Oh, oh, Truth. OMG. Right? Oh, my God. And <laughs> at first I thought, okay, I'm giving up. That's it. I'm done. I never want to wow. see a camera again. That's oh, no. it. Oh, I had that thought. Of course no. I did. Of course I did because it's so frustrating because I can't I can see that, yes. get past a certain thing. I've tried, yeah. tried, 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 tried been on Instagram for quite some time yeah and now in my face all this commercial work I've been doing um, mm. is now coming to fruition and I just lost that job because of this yeah, yes. and I actually said to them are you kidding me one I I you said I was absolutely perfect for the job my work was perfect for the job it was the perfect fit, but you're ignoring the perfect fit because I don't have the right social media. And also, you're saying that the onus of a multinational corporation's advertising is now partially on me as well because what, is that, what does that even mean? And, and it was ironic because the art director who, who um, had originally hired me was freelance, and he had less followers than me on Instagram, but they hired him. But they would not hire me. Yeah. And it was HR that said, mm -hmm. you can't hire her. And it wasn't a creative decision. It was an HR decision. Yeah. And it really was, it was very startling. And it was a real come to Jesus moment in yeah. my life. And I realized that with this next iteration of my career, which is coming with this next website we're doing, yeah. I have to be able to work that out. Okay. If that's the story. Oh, so much to talk about right now. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I'm going to do my best Jonah impersonation. Oh, oh my God. word. Oh, my word. Oh, my right? word. Okay, okay. Woo! People on the live stream are feeling it. 
Oh my gosh. They're oh just, yeah, what are they saying? Like, I can't Ouch. see it. Oh my gosh. Right? <laughs> you know, so rude. They're saying all kinds of things. Like that's messed up. Okay. It is. I want to ask you one quick question and then I want to have I want to give you a response to this. Which is how much did that cost you? I hadn't even guessed yet at the budget. You mean the budget? Yeah, the budget. I have no idea, but I thought it, you you were like green lit, like it's ready no, to no, go. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, yes, I ballpark got the it. job, but we were just about to start ballparking it, and I didn't even know exactly what I. I mean, I hadn't. I I was waiting to get throw a number at it. Just throw a job. number at us. Oh. What would have been? What would have been for that Canon? Job? Yeah, for Canon. Four day long job. Yes, how much? Fifty thousand. Fifty k. Are you kidding? Probably. Probably at least. least. At least. Right? At least. At least. Okay. I want to paint the picture. Like, this is the Rembrandt here. I need you guys to feel the but pain that's a guess. in its totality. <laughs> I think it's a very safe guess. Yeah. Four day shoot for Canon, probably north of $50,000. Yes. Just thinking about day rates and all right. that kind of stuff. And Forget about all the other stuff, else, yeah. all the other prep and art direction, mm -hmm. everything you got to do. That's how much it costs you. Now, yeah. How much is that per I, follower? <laughs> that's a dollar a follower. Right. Okay. But let's think about it, though. Let's think about it. Canon is trying to be of the times, which is to understand that there's the artists and then there's influencer marketing and that you can help jumpstart their campaign. Mm -hmm. So they're not just buying you and your eye because they feel that they can have many replacements for. And it's very, it's getting more difficult every day because there's a thousand people who want to do the exact same thing. We know that. So then they're going to look at a different metric. This is what I'm saying. It used to be that the best image wins. The best idea wins. Mm -hmm. And it's changed drastically. And you have to be able to react to that. Otherwise, you're going to get swept behind. I, I just feel like that's going to happen. Okay? So they want media. That's really what they want. They need impressions and eyeballs on whatever it is that they're saying that's so important. And they want to know that you're going to do that. And they, you know what? If you had the 50,000 followers and if you mentioned it, they would have paid you even more. Probably. No, for real, they yeah. would. Yeah. You would charge some more. Right. Because I'm an influencer. You're an influencer. And you say, <laughs> well, if you want me to mention it, mm -hmm. it's $7,000 a mention. Mm. So then that was 57. And they're probably, well, why don't you mention it twice? Well, okay, that's now $64,000. That's what that costs you. Right. So let's learn how to play the game. Exactly. Okay. And I can see that you were, you were just like hit in the gut. You were hit in the gut and it hurt. It's like, what do you mean? I mean, way to tease me, like say go and then say, no, never mind. Right. Okay. We don't care what anybody else does. We only care about what we do. So whether or not that art director had zero followers or three million, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And so this is why it's really important to build your audience. Because when they love you and they appreciate you, you say, hey, I'm over here at this hotel, and guess what happens? Inquiries, uh, traffic, the, uh, what is it, traffic to that site goes up. Right. Like, wow, why don't you stay at our hotel for free? <laughs> exactly. Right? We'll fly you in because, oh, or we're going to have a conference, and we would love for you to speak. Yes, I have 200,000 followers. Some of them will come. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So we can understand that from a peer business and marketing point of view. They actually ha had to do this. Otherwise, we would say, like, Canon just doesn't get it. They're not with the times. Mm -hmm. So we understand that. And you would want the exact same thing too. It just it's, it feels unfair because it's happening to you and right. you don't have the followers. Of course. Okay. Well, so you're not that far behind me with, uh, I mean, you went to school in that era, mm -hmm. right? I did. Same era I did. Yes. Uh, where we were learning very analog practices, you know, because computers just were coming in. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, how did you transition during this time from whatever you were doing before to what happened now into this moment today? Like, how did oh, you figure question. that out so so fluidly? Well, it wasn't that fluid. It wasn't fluid. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that as it's it's like, coming out of my mouth. <laughs> you know, you go to the river and you pick up that stone. It's really smooth. And you're like, how were you born so smooth? <laughs> well, it's like I've tumbled from the top of the mountain. I've been in this riverbed for 10,000 years, you know, right. perfectly smoothed over by water and time. <laughs> All right, let's talk about that. Uh, for those of you guys that want to do the math and try to figure out how old I am, I graduated in 1995 in graphic design. So I've been running blind for 23 years right now. 23 years longer than some of you have been alive. Just <laughs> let that register in your brain, okay? And about five years ago, as all these 
platforms are coming up online. It's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Just, but my attitude is like, hey, let me just explore. Let's see what this thing's all about. And yeah, sometimes you get on something and it goes away. Like I used to post images to Flickr. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> all right, that was a waste of time. Did you do MySpace? You know? I was on, no, I wasn't on MySpace, but I was on Friendster for like half a Friendster. minute. Yeah, I was of that era. I was on there and then right. Facebook pops up. I'm like, what is this Facebook thing? Right, let me try this. And I remember some of my designer friends made fun of me like, oh, you know, you're jumping on that stupid bandwagon stuff. I'm like, oh, maybe I am. Maybe it's a waste of time, but I'll try. But it wasn't until I reconnected with a friend of mine from school, Jose Caballero. Yes. Okay. And he and I are talking and I'm like, Jose, how do you grow your following? Like, what, what's going on? Like, what do I need to do? What am I doing wrong? So I think this is where we all need a mentor or a guide in our world. Mm -hmm. Like we need our Yoda, you know, and we're like, Luke, I have a... I have a lightsaber. I'm, I'm tempted to break it out right now. Do it. No. <laughs> it. <laughs> it might go horribly wrong. Okay. Maybe, maybe. If you guys hang in there, I'll break out the lightsaber. But we all need our Yoda. Somebody who's just maybe just a little bit older or has figured something out and we can just learn from them to kind of follow in their steps and kind of remove the shroud of the mystery of how it's all done. So Jose told me a couple of things and then I started like getting really into it. And then he turned around and was like, I'm creating a monster. Look at you. Oh my God, what are you doing? And then I made it my mission to surpass him in followers on every platform he was on. That was just a benchmark, not ah, in an nice. angry competitive way, but like, can I catch up to my teacher? Can I catch up to my, my, my mm. master? Then I'll know I've done something right. Right. And I keep setting new benchmarks as I surpass one person after the other. And you learn how to talk to people on the platform that you're on and it's different for each one mm -hmm. and I've, I've done a lot of experiments and have figured out things that worked now those of you guys that are in the zoom call i'm gonna get to you in a second i definitely want to talk to you guys okay i want you guys to join the conversation so hang in there mark can you help me by flagging whoever has got a good question yep you prioritize them so when they're ready i'll, I'll queue you up and you're going to introduce them okay yep we'll queue them up okay we have some questions already you got ahead. some question yep okay all right, let's let's uh go ahead fire the fire away the question then. Go ahead. Okay, so we'll start with Check Tommy. Let's get Tommy pinned over here. Oh, oh yeah, put the headphones on. Okay, so one second. Let's just get this situated here. All right. Is, is he unmuted? <laughs> you have to unmute him. Try. Okay. <laughs> We're still working out some technical <laughs> issues, guys. Go. Wait right. a second. Come on. Technology. Almost there. Come on, guys. Come on. Okay. Come, with, come in with the questions. All right. Now, hey, Tommy, can I'm we... Unmuted. There, there we are. are. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready, master. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll deal with this later. Okay. Go ahead. So how many followers do you have to have to be considered an influencer? I don't know. 989. <laughs> <laughs> I like the answer. She's like 989. That's exactly how many she has. <laughs> Woo! Yvette, quick on the feet. Good job. Good job, Yvette. Sharp. You should use that humor and that wit in your post. <laughs> I will. I'm you will. know what I mean? <laughs> no, you know what? First of all, I think you need to get to 10,000 on Instagram. Let's just talk about Instagram. Let's focus on Instagram. I think you need to get to 10,000 at bare minimum because that allows you to unlock certain features like including links. So we got to get to the 10,000 mark. Okay. Now, I, I want to say something. The number of followers and likes that you get on something, those are all vanity metrics because you can get a ton of engagement and a ton of followers, but if they're not willing to do anything for you, then your followers are not worth that much. Okay, and that's why having a lot of robots and people mass following or follow me, I follow you kind of thing doesn't really work. I believe you need to grow a genuine base built around your principles and your beliefs and your values for them to have any real meaning. Okay. I believe, I believe that makes my, my 50,000 followers or so are actually true followers and I grew them very slowly, organically and respond. And you guys that have followed me on Instagram at the Christo, you guys that follow me on Instagram know that when you send me a message, I do send you a message back. Even though it's like two in the morning, I'm like, oh my God, I got to respond to you. <laughs> it's killing me, but I'm responding to each and every single person. They're like a little surprised. Like, oh my God, I can't believe you responded. Well, why wouldn't I? I'm here to engage with you. I really am. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I think for somebody to really seriously consider you, what would the number? What do you think, Mark? What's the number? I think ten thousand just for this exact minimum. reason. Yeah, because when, yeah. that's when you can unlock a lot of those features. Yeah, your mic is a little low for some reason. Okay, there you go. We got him. Yeah, so at least ten thousand, but I would say like I would say probably thirty, forty, fifty thousand, probably for somebody to consider. So that's an audience worth by talking Monday. To. I could probably <laughs> do no definitely problem. by Monday. <laughs> Nope. You can definitely do it by Monday. Now, yeah. I'm going to caution some of you guys. <laughs> I, I know somebody who has robot followers on Twitter in the hundreds of thousands. And the reason why I know this is because when they, they make a comment or a tweet, they get like four pieces or four bits of engagement. Mm -hmm. That's really, really low. Then that's a telltale sign that you, your followers don't really care about you and they're robots. Mm -hmm. And so I would, if I were you in that case, let's say you've done that, I would purge all your followers and start again. Because they're they're not real humans. They're not. Okay. Now, when we went to YouTube, the YouTube studio, they said that do a small test. Ask your followers to do one small thing and see if they'll do it. Then you can see if they're real human beings. Like, for example, you say, um, what's your favorite color? Let me know in the comments below. And if they respond with their favorite color, then you know they're engaged with mm -hmm. you. That's it. Do unless a little the, test. Unless the bots are really smart these days. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Write your favorite color with like numbers and letters so they can't figure it out. <laughs> What's your favorite CO1? Oh, you know, just do a little. No, they're, they're not that smart because they're not really engaged with you. Okay. Right. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so that's, that's that, that question. Okay. Who else has got another question? Let's see. We've. We'll have to queue somebody up. Okay, we'll queue somebody up. Yeah. In case you guys are wondering, how is it that some people are able to join the conversation with Yvette and I? There are people in our pro community. I'm doing an experiment. I didn't want to open this up to the to the public because it can get a little crazy. They know what to do, so they're joining us via Zoom. Okay, let's keep going in our conversation, Yvette, while the, the team is preparing the next question. Okay, so can yeah. I ask you a question? Yeah, a, okay. a million questions, please. So what do you think about the way things look? What do you think about the way grids look like oh, okay the grid people question. talk a lot about that yes, and a lot of people are on one side and a lot of people on the other side does your grid does the look of your grid matter now you're asking a designer yes i know a that's graphic a designer so ask. i'm gonna say uh yes your grid matters the, the layout and here's here's my recommendation to you i want you to think of your feed as a really highly curated magazine editorial mm-hmm I want you to think about stories that you want to tell, maybe even in seasons. Because if you look at an editorial calendar, and you know better than I, for a magazine, they already have it laid out for the whole year. Right. Person of the year, uh, year end recap, uh, whatever it is, they, they have it all figured out. So I think you want to start to take that approach so that you're not posting moment to moment. Mm -hmm. You've got some kind of concept. Okay. And... Bonnie talks about this too. She treats her feed very much like an editorial thing. So she'll say Mondays is about work. Mm. Tuesdays is about behind the scenes. Uh, Wednesday will be a just me just chilling and being vulnerable and dirty and messy. And then it's work, work or something like that. So she's figured out her rhythm and her cadence. And it follows a certain thing. Because when I see you on Instagram, I have just a moment to decide whether or not I want to follow you. Mm -hmm. So I get turned off when it's like too many kids, right. too many dogs. It's like, no, I'm here to, to grow or to be inspired. Right. So there's a simple rule that Austin Kleon talks about in his book, Show Your Work. He says, inform or inspire. Hmm. Those mm -hmm. are the two things. If it doesn't fit on those things, I want you to throw them out. Right. And it's interesting when I see people who post images on Instagram, they'll have like really low performing posts. And I was just thinking, are you paying attention to your audience and to your community? And I'm, I'm of that mindset, like if it doesn't work after you give it a couple of tries, go and delete those things from mm. your, your page. Because those same low engagement posts are going to be the exact reason why somebody else is not going to follow you. Mm -hmm. So be mindful of that. Listen to your audience. It's a conversation. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is to use whatever assets you have, whatever makes you you and unique and interesting. Like if you have a funky toe, put your toe in every shot. Because <laughs> people Tyler care about does that. that. Does he? Yes. Does he have a funky he has toe? the weirdest toe. See? He took a negative and made it a positive. Oh I just made that random thing up. Put you in you. I mean, they need to see you and, and attach to your story. And I think that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. What else? Um, hmm. 
Mr. VFX, thanks for tuning in. I know it's 2 a.m. in the morning. I hope we're uh, entertaining you or informing or inspiring you or something like that or all of the above. Oh, do we have the next question ready to go? Not yet. Yeah. We do? Go. Okay, let's go to the next question. Okay, so and you can hear the question, have, okay? okay? We have us. Angel coming up here. Angel. Okay, everybody right. else, put yourself on mute. Angel, we yep. can hear you. We can hear you. Go ahead. Going on, everybody? How are you? Let's get to the question, buddy. Oh, my question. Sorry, I'm like confused over here by that. <laughs> All right, so. Um, Look at the camera. Uh, Look at the camera. Oh. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Angel, you're a pro member. Come on, represent. Cool over here. Yeah, All let's right, go. So, uh, I'm very much a great guy. I love posting in grids, at least in the uh, the row. You know, we like to post whenever we post in the studio. We do row, row, row. So, but I feel like that's also been our, our sort of biggest weakness because we want to post and we want to curate it so much that I end up not posting consistently. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so how can, I'm able to marry both, able to post consistently and at the same time um, post, you know, good work. I have the answer for you, buddy. I have it. Okay, thank you. Angel, do you have one of your hats, by the way? You should be wearing your hat, no? <laughs> no, okay, never mind. He doesn't know how to plug. Okay, <laughs> that's why you need a coach, Angel. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Oh, you're wearing your shirt at least. Okay, fine. Angel's question is, yeah, we can become a little obsessed over the grid and make sure it's perfect. So when we're not quite ready, it's like we don't post and we don't, we're not consistent. I think there are many schools of thought on this. Some people say you must post consistently. And I have to tell you, I've not posted anything on my feed, my Instagram feed for months. Maybe it's been six months because I've been busy with so many other things. And he's right. We can get obsessed over the grid and the sequence. How I make up for that is I use Instagram stories. Like little moments and that's that's how I can keep my audience engaged and so I don't have to be so perfect and I think it's I prefer the the, the stories more so than the grid so mm -hmm. I now I feel like I have enough things on my grid that if somebody finds me they're like oh that's cool hmm. and I have and, and the followers just keep growing okay so I think I stopped posting things about around the 40,000 mark and now I'm at 54,000 followers so it's not hurting me and that's just my thought on it. I'm pretty sure other Instagram pros will tell you you got to post consistently. And, you know, like all things in life, if you want it enough, you'll make it work. You have to start to prioritize this. This has to become part of your daily experience and you have to be thinking about this. And I'm going to make an excuse for myself because I'm, I'm tweeting. I'm putting up Instagram stories. I'm writing YouTube content. I'm responding to all these comments. So... There's only so much I can do. Oh, come on. You can do I that. can do one more thing. Come on. <laughs> and then I'm going to Europe to talk, you know? So it's like, it's a lot of stuff. But, okay, so yeah. are those people who are engaging with your stories... Yes. ...then going to your feed and liking your old stuff? Yes, they do. They do. They do. So you keep growing your likes and comments on not on, on older content because they you pull them in because of your sparkling personality and your stories, right? That's, that must be it. It's my sparkling personality. <laughs> he gets that a lot. <laughs> I get that all the time. I'm, sure. I'm almost tired of hearing it. <laughs> you know, the other way that you really grow your followers really quickly is you, you spend the time to make very valuable content that then gets shared all over the internet. Mm. I, I've told this story before that Jonathan Rudolph over at Logo Inspirations, after we created that video on how to price a logo, because his community, I think at that time he had 300,000 followers, now he's at 890,000. He's like, oh, go check out Chris Doe. And then that day, something crazy happened, because you know, I'll check in the morning, sometimes you get like three followers, five followers. That day it was like 50. And I will put my phone down and pick it up, another 70, wow. another 80, and I was like, mm -hmm. woo! And then I had to figure out, how is this traffic coming to me right now? Mm. And I really think it's like you have to be consistent in creating valuable content, but not necessarily on a timeline. That's it. So I would prefer that you don't put something out just because you have to put something out. Right. Because that's how I've been feeling. You feel and that that's pressure? that's how I know yeah. most of my colleagues who are struggling with this feel the same way. Yeah. I promise you. Mm. I hear that. Mm -hmm. And people who I speak to uh, who are frustrated are always saying the pressure of posting all the time, yeah. dot, 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 fill in the rest of the blank. Right. Okay. Do we have a... Do we keep... We should keep going. Do we have another question? Oh, okay. Um, you guys have to interrupt us if you're ready, okay? Yeah, I think everybody that asked is uh, all done now. <laughs> They're all silent. <laughs> They're all silent. <laughs> We've silenced them. Okay, <laughs> let's let's come. Uh, like we're almost out of time okay. here. I have seven more minutes to spend with you. So let's let's come. Let's hit me with another question. Well, should we should we talk a little about bold? I'll I'll, I'll do that right then. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I was. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, uh, yeah, do you, okay, so do you get an actual, does your firm get an, a lot of work because of Instagram, just solely based on Instagram? Are you really reeling in clients from that that's directly? A, that's a very good question. The answer is no. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's talk about this. That that's an excellent question. And what everybody wants to know is like, is all this work and activity on social media actually converting to dollars? And here's what I want to say to this. You guys ready? Get the dramatic music ready, guys. You guys ready? Here we go. I think in our life we think that if we do something, we want something in return. We right. want to measure life like that. So when we post something, we almost expect something wonderful to happen, and we're thinking very transactional, like. I do this, therefore it should equal that many dollars. And I know I differ from a lot of people, but I I don't post things and think that it's transactional. I post things because I want it to be transformational for the person who's going to digest the piece of content. Hmm. So Hmm. I try to write stories or I try to put a lens into the world to remind people that, you know what? You're good enough, you're strong enough, and gosh darn it, people love you, (laughs) and you need to celebrate that. And I try to teach people how to negotiate and define their value, create value for others. And some way, somehow, that comes back to us. Now, because of the YouTube channel, less so on Instagram, Mm -hmm. but you you choose your social media platform of choice, right? Because of the YouTube channel, we have closed a $100,000 job because there are fans. And it's been nuts in the way that they talk to us on the phone. Because they're giddy. Mm -hmm. They're like, I can't believe I'm talking to you. It's like, (laughs) yes. And it's an awkward, kind of weird, delightful position to be in. Where they genuinely love you. And I remember, I remember thinking this to myself. If I go online and I teach people how to negotiate with clients and all the tricks that I'm doing, I have to develop the next level Jedi mind tricks when they call. And so when <laughs> they, they actually call, tricks. yeah, they know all the tricks are. You gave them the exactly. playbook. How are you going to outfox them, right? So what happened is my, my executive producer, Scott, at that time told me, hey, they're big fans of yours. Like, okay. And I was like, oh, Chris, this is it. This is game night. Let's get ready for this. We got it. We got to be able to be like, be next level, be next level. You get on the phone, a little quick introduction. They mention a few things and they're closing themselves for me. Right. It because, was so bizarre. I don't have to right. say anything. Right. They're like, oh, we'll do this. And you'll probably say that. I'm like, well, this is fantastic. <laughs> this is the best close ever. It was ball bearings, Swiss ball bearings. It just was so smooth. So, so, um, I'm, I understand fully the indirect. But wait, I, I, I have more. I have oh, more. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Just like Ron Popeil. But wait, there's more. <laughs> For limited time only. What, what else has happened is I thought by putting this stuff out there to help younger designers or people in transition, that that's all we're talking to. But people who own agencies reach out to me directly. People who are, um, what is that, design directors of big firms, mm-hmm. they reach out to me. And one of them sent us a referral that is worth a million dollars, literally one million dollars. And now when I walk around to uh, on the convention floor, I I meet uh, Mike French of French Paper. I'm like, hey, he's like, I'm a fan. And then (laughs) we walk by the Dropbox and they're like, hey, we're fans. So let's do something together. Let's collaborate on something. And so eventually that you, you kind of reach the tipping point. And then once it falls, you're good. I'm just going to fall face forward to a pile of cash. Well, but that indirect uh, sort of, well, that indirect directness, yes. you know, because you're not directly getting jobs and opportunities, but you're indirectly getting jobs and opportunities, but you're proving, which is circling back to our very first question, yes. how do you like pull out from the crowd as a professional and your professional practice and distinguish yourself in a professional practice from all the people who are, you know, influencers, but they're using their iPhones and they're just recording this and that and they're not, you know, uh, truly uh, invested in the way we have done or the way an art center grad has right. done or the way somebody has been in business for 25 years has done. Right. right? So this is going to be a little shocking to you, Yvette. Bonnie sang. She was on a guest on her show, and we're going to talk about her in a second. She shoots with an iPhone. Completely? Completely. Well, I am sorry. I shouldn't diss the iPhone. No, no. It's, but yeah, no, it's, you know it's a fair. Saying, it, I know exactly right. what you're saying. So she shoots with an iPhone. Uh, she doesn't know how to use lights, so she doesn't use lights at all. So I said, What do your clients say? Mm-hmm. It's like, If you want me to shoot it, then that's the way I do my job. 
And they're like, okay. And she gets to work. So she's self-taught, shoots with an iPhone, uses no lights. But you know why they pick her? Why they work with her? Because she's very clear about who she is, her personal brand. She's about uh, uh, empowerment for female entrepreneurs. She was at a one point a single mom raising now two kids. Now mm -hmm. she's married, but that's her story. It's like it's in her DNA. So when you're Gap or Estee Lauder or LACMA or whoever, you're like bought into the story. Right. And so the pixels don't matter so much anymore. Right. And this is the debate that happens all the time among cinematographers. Like a new camera comes out and it's like 8K, 12K, 20 million K <laughs> sensor. And like, wow, I got to get the camera. Right. But did you know how to tell a story? Do you know how to shoot? Do you know how to light? Indeed. And there's a bunch of cinematographers like, you know what? I'm never going to upgrade my camera because I don't need it. Mm -hmm. And so we have to let go that the tools or the pixels define who you are. And you know that. And I know you know that. I just want to remind everybody, it's not about that. Mm -hmm. So when they're, when they're in love with your story and who you are and you become that attractive character for them and you represent their market, that's fantastic. And so I always tell people, somebody out there is looking to work with you right now. They're desperately looking for you. But you, not you, but you have done a really good job of making it impossible to find you. You hide behind the work and you don't ever want to come out. Mm -hmm. I said on a, on a recent tweet to some, you know, out into the universe, I said, you, you have a beautiful voice. Maybe you should do something with it. And you have a beautiful voice. Your work, your lens into the world, what mm -hmm. you've done, your experiences. And I think you can share that with people in a way that will connect with them. Okay. I would love to have this conversation with you for another two hours or so, <laughs> but alas, the time is upon us and I cannot. I want to mention to a couple of people what's going on and why we're even having this conversation, right? Uh, cut to my slide, please. Okay, you guys need to know this. Bonnie Sang, who I've mentioned, I said I'm talking to her about, I'm going to talk more about her in a, right now. Um, she's going to be doing a workshop with us that we're producing with Bold, and this is just a small world because Yvette co-founded Bold. And we're both Art Center alum. So this is interesting because she didn't even go to school. And here she is. Right. She's going to do this with us. And it's going to be fantastic. So we're going to be at Art Center February 23rd. Okay. It's going to be a whole day workshop. It's going to be super concentrated. 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. The Art Center red carpet treatment is rolled out here. There's going to be lunch provided. Opportunities for you to network and socialize with people. I think this is a steal. We should be charging $399 for this, but it's $149. And for everybody that's watching this, future family, use the discount code, code BOLDFUTURE19. And that's all I got for you guys. We'll drop the Eventbrite link in the comments right now so you guys can find it. It'll be in the description below, you guys. And that's it for me. Make sure you guys, if you like this, like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell icon. I just also want to say thank you so much to our sustaining members, part of the donation. We're out of here. I'll see you guys next time. Hey, that wasn't too bad. No. Yeah.